so we're going to start talking about teething. So when your puppy is about 12 weeks old, you tend to start seeing an increase of teething behavior, that kind of more fr frustrated biting. That's where those little needly teeth are coming out of the gums. They're moving and grooving and they hurt. Um, and if any of you guys have children in the home or, or raised kids or had siblings who had children, um, that teething is common with all mammals. Those big teeth are all, the, all of the, these puppies are born with their big teeth in their mouths. They're not created as the puppy gets bigger. Babies are born with all of their teeth in their mouth. So as those adult teeth are coming down, it's wearing down the roots of those baby teeth, those little needly teeth. And then as they come down and those teeth become loose, they want to chew more. They need to tease. So they, they, those adult teeth can erupt through and push the baby tooth out of the way. But it's a very uncomfortable process. So the other thing to keep in mind with teething is that your puppies don't have these magic things that we have called thumbs. <laughs> thumbs allow us to pick things up, um, to examine the world around us. Your puppy is learning what is safe and what is not safe how to play, how to eat, what is, what means no. Like if I bite really hard, I'm mad. Like they're learning how to use emotion and how to examine the world around them through their mouth because they don't have fingers. They can't pick things up. So, um, so while they're going through this process, they're learning a whole lot. Couple ways to kind of help them with this teething. If you have another puppy nearby, if you guys are in the city, if you have a neighbor who has a similarly aged puppy, um, that's up to date on vaccines and their appropriate players, they can go ahead and they can play and like learn on each other if it looks like a good, they're having a good time. I would not recommend bringing your little puppy to a dog park at this stage because they tend to get just trampled and over, overrun and it's not usually an appropriate place for a very small puppy like you guys. I usually say dog parks for puppies who are six months and older, generally speaking, if the puppy's cool in large groups like that. Couple things you can do to try to help with that teething process. Um, Heather had mentioned she was freezing Kongs. And for the puppies who are closer to five, six months old, that might actually be a really good tool for you. Um, they kind of look like this. You fill them with peanut butter, yogurt, you can freeze them. You can actually just put their regular kibble in if you have a younger puppy, so that way they just tip it over and it's super easy. You don't want to make it too hard for them if they're really young. So the puppies who are four months and under, this, if you freeze it, will become frustrating to them and they'll lick it twice and be like, oh, goldfish and walk away, right? Um, but for your slightly older puppies, this might be a good tool. Um, there are easier ones. This one's called a topple. It's by West Paw Design. I don't know if you can see that there. Um, they come in two sizes. There's a, a lime green one that's big and then there's this. And I actually use it, um, Captain ate out of it today, so it's in the dishwasher. But you can actually put them together and freeze it or if you have a little puppy, you can just put some um, peanut butter here and it's wide open so they can just chew on this while they're trying to get to the peanut butter or cream cheese or, um, or maybe like a thick paste um, canned dog food. They can chew on this and you can see like um, there are like little divots on here so it's absorbing his bite. And I have a 50 pound dog that's probably half pit bull. So if he hasn't been able to break this yet, I'm pretty sure your dogs are gonna be okay with these. Um, the Kongs, you wanna get appropriate for their size. Now these are for adult dogs, the red and the black. The black are for very hard chewers. They have a light blue swirl and a light pink swirl um, because I guess Kongs are gendered. <laughs> so like, I don't think your puppy cares, but like if you have like the little ones, it's a softer, material so it kind of gives into their biting a little bit better and it really helps massage their gums. Another thing to keep in mind for those teething puppies, you can take um, frozen carrots, frozen baby carrots, and give those to your puppy and that's like kind of crunchy so if you have a puppy who really likes just getting into trouble that might be a good one for them. Um, and a wet washcloth, you can soak it in chicken broth, roll it up and stick it in the freezer and the, the fabric massages their gums and the cold helps reduce some of the swelling. Plus they have a lot of fun because they're chewing up some fabric. So it's probably better that they're chewing that than your clothes. Um, so that's a little bit on teething. Another thing to keep in mind, uh, which way? I feel like a camera, like a meteorologist trying to figure out how cameras work. Um, they're back molars. 
they will drop at about eight months old. They're called their eight month molars. They're analogous to our wisdom teeth. So by the time your puppy is about five months old, all of their regular adult teeth should be in. Um, so you'll see a decrease in that kind of frustrated, mouthy, chewy, aggressive, like, ah, my face hurts, biting behavior. But when they get um, to about eight months, so you have about a three month window of calm before the storm of wisdom teeth. And you'll know that it's coming in when they're taking toys and they're shoving them in the back of their mouths and they're chewing really hard. Um, so you'll see a resurgence of teething at about eight months and then they're done. Um, so for us, for puppies, it's about an, uh, you're really looking at about five months from, from tip to tail of teething. Whereas for humans, like we don't get our wisdom teeth until we're 18 to 24. So it's a much longer teething process for us as humans, but for puppies, they're done before they're even a year. Another note on baby teeth, don't panic. <laughs> if your puppy is missing a tooth and you don't see it, often they swallow it. So if they swallow their tooth, don't call your vet. They're fine, they're made to be, go through the pipes and out the other end. Um, you'll, you might even see um, a couple of teeth, maybe on the floor if they're chewing on a bone or something, and then you see like a pile of teeth, don't panic, also totally normal. Um, with my first puppy, I ended up calling the vet going, there's like four teeth there, they're falling out of her head. I had this nightmare when I was a kid. Like, no, it's fine, it's normal, teeth, fine. One problem that you do maybe want to have a conversation with your vet about is if their adult tooth comes in and the baby tooth around it doesn't fall out. That can break and become infected. So usually if you're having conversations with your veterinarian and your vet is suggesting that your dog is spayed or neutered at around six months, they can then pull out those baby tooth teeth while they're under, under anesthesia. And that way you don't have to go back and put them under anesthesia again. So if you notice that there's a, a, a baby tooth that hasn't come out, don't worry, talk to your vet. They'll usually notice, but if they're looking at one end of your puppy and not the other, and they don't know to look in their mouth, if you just bring it up, they usually just pop them out for you while you're there at the vet office. Um, do we have any questions about teething? Damage. Um... So when, when they really get into it and they're, and they're kind of more frenetic on you, um, and, and I know like if you have small kids in the home that this tends to be a big area of concern, especially like um, uh, if you have flowy clothing, they also have to come after it. So if you like to wear like uh, flowy dresses or skirts, puppies like that, wider leg pants, they like to go after that too, shoes, arms, hands, things like that. So if, again, if you have another puppy in the area that they could play with, they can get that instinct and that energy out on a buddy and then there's less likelihood that they're going to be biting on you. That said, if you don't have that option or if your puppy's just not getting it, you pick up your puppy and put him or her in the crate with something that you prefer they chew on, especially if they've hurt you. Um, generally speaking, mouths, uh, puppy mouths on humans up until about 14 weeks is okay as long as they're not hurting you. If, he, if your puppy's already taken a chunk out of your husband, that's not okay. <laughs> um, so if she's starting to get bitey and chewy, try to give her something, an alternative like a tug toy. We'll talk a little bit about how to use tug toys to help you in a minute. Um, but if she's really just trying to come at your hands, keep in mind she's trying to figure out how to play with people. We're not dogs. Our skin is way more sensitive than their litter mates or their, their other dog friends. So if they're biting your hands, your feet, your kids, Pick up the puppy, time out, go in the crate with something appropriate to chew. Now, if you guys are crate training, you probably have read, don't use the crate as punishment. And I think there's a huge distinction to make. If you're mad because your puppy peed on the floor and you're like, damn it, you throw your puppy in the crate, you slam the door and you're like, you stay in there and you think about what you did. That's punishment and that's bad. And that's not usually what we would recommend. <laughs> but if your puppy is coming after you and you're saying no, or you're trying to redirect and they're unable to do it and they're insistent, go in your crate and you're giving them the preferred chew toy, the thing that you want them to chew on instead of you or your partner or your kid or your clothes, that is a, an appropriate use of using a management tool like a crate. Um, if you are not using a crate, you can use, um, what we call a waste leash. Um, I have one that you'll see in later videos or, or uh, classes with me. 
I wear a leash around my waist and it tethers to my dog so my hands are free. Um, so you can use a waist leash and actually keep your dog tethered to you if you're worried about the puppy going after a partner or a kid or a cat or a chicken or a turkey um, or anything else. The other thing you can consider is a drag line. Has anybody heard of that tool or, or um, term? A drag line is an old leash that you might have kicking around and you cut off the, um, the handle where your, your hand goes through. If you cut that off, now you just have like a straight leash without anything that's gonna get caught on things. And you keep that other end connected to your puppy either on a back clip harness or their collar. And if they start to get really frustrated, you can pull them away and stand on that leash and have them work on an appropriate chew. Like either one of those toys that I showed you before, tendons, bones, um, uh, bully sticks. Has everybody heard of the term bully stick? Um, for the, You have, cool. Um, for those who haven't, a bully stick is a tendon very specific to a bull and not a cow. Um, and we do have children watching, so hopefully you figure it out. Um, it's a tendon, it's very dense, and it's really hard for puppies to get through. Now, if that is too rich of a tendon for your puppy, they have these things called twizzles that are just like very loose, like um, like ankle tendons, flossies, like very, um, very small tendons that puppies can get through pretty quickly, small dogs can get through pretty quickly but it kind of relieves the pressure in their mouth and they're able to chew on those without the richness of a bully stick. Um, for puppies who are a little bit older, five, six, seven months old, bully sticks I think are a little bit more appropriate. For puppies under four months old, I like the lower, uh, the, the less expensive, perfectly honest, and the, um, the lower density tendons. Um, rawhides, I always advise students to ask their veterinarian about flips and rawhides. Because I know if you look on the internet, there's a lot of controversy about rawhides. Um, I personally use them for my dog, but he also has a, the constitution of a cannonball and he can eat pretty much anything and he's fine. If you have a puppy that's got a lot more of a sensitive stomach, that might not be a tool for you. Um, so talk to your vet about, um, about what might be appropriate for them to eat or not eat if you guys have questions about those things. Um, but again, using a management tool like a leash, a drag line, or a crate if your puppy's getting frenetic. Now one thing, 